Welcome back to the series of lectures on many electron atoms. In this video, we'll be talking about term symbols. In the last video, we talked about Russell Sandow's coupling, which assumes a weak coupling between the spin motion of the electron and the orbital motion of the electron. And therefore, each orbital motion couples together to form a resultant spin. Each spin motion couples together to form a resultant S. So that's L equals summation of L Li's and S equals summation of all Si's. And then the resultant orbital motion, angular momentum, couples together with the resultant spin motion to give the total angular momentum of the system or of the state. And J goes from L plus S to L minus S. Um, absolute value because it cannot have a negative value. So the usual way to represent uh, the um, Rosa-Sanders coupling is a, a term symbol. Term symbol is also called spectroscopic term symbol. is an abbreviated description of the spin-spin orbit coupling of, as described by the Russell-Sanders coupling. Russell Sanders also LS coupling or RS coupling. It has the form of uh, the multiplicity being written as a pre superscript followed by the letter uh, representation of the um, orbital, the resultant orbital angular momentum. If you recall, S is zero. 0 is a state, 1 is the p state, and then followed by the, the, the subscript of whatever the resultant j is. So an s is the total spin quantum number, that's the resultant spin quantum number from the coupling of all the spin motion. This is used to describe the states when considering spectra in many electron atoms, unlike for the single electron atoms where L and S are just enough. So let's look at some examples. If you have a state that we already determined the resultant spin S to be one and the resultant L to be two, what will be the J value? Now, for s to be equal to 1, we calculate the multiplicity. The multiplicity is given as 2s plus 1. So if s is 1, so the multiplicity will be 2 into 1, bracket 1, plus 1. That gives us 3. L, if we calculate L, we already know L is a 2. So if we look at our table, when L is 0, it's represented by capital letter S. That's capital letter L. It's much like that for the orbital angular momentum of the hydrogen-like atom. However, it's capital letters in this case. So our L is 2. If we look at 2, the corresponding letter value is capital letter D. So we have a D state. So if we have a D state, we can determine the value of our J from the uh, value of J. So j is a 2 plus 1 n is 2 and s is 1 that's 3 up to 2 minus 1 in integral steps integral that's taking taking minus 1 from it you're subtracting 1 from each value so if we go in that direction so that we have a 3 minus 1 2 2 minus 1 1 so we have 3 2 1 so there are three possible values of j the term symbols are given by that sim the this abbreviated form. In this abbreviated form, we have 2s plus 1, L, J. So if we go back to what we have calculated, 2s plus 1, that's 3. L is D. So we have a 3D state. And then we now slot in the values of J. There are three possible values. So we can have 3D3, 3D2 and uh, 3d1. Let's work another example. So we consider 
the hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atom is 1s1. 1s1 means that uh, s is up and l is 0. s is up because it's an electron. Yeah, for an electron, s is up. L is 0 because it is an s orbital. So this is supposed to be 1. I apologize for that. Okay, so if s is up, we can equally say that the resultant spin is up. So we can calculate our multiplicity, and that's a 2s plus 1. So that's 2 into bracket r plus 1. That gives us 2. So it is a doublet state. L is 0. 0 s state. Please, let's try not to confuse this s with this s. The, the only way to know it, I know, it's the same letter. The only way to know it is just uh, where it's been used in the equation. So, L is 0 implies an S state. So, we have the total angular momentum can take values half plus 0 up to half minus 0, which is still half. So, it can only have the value of a so, so, because it can have the value of half, then our time symbol is doublet s r again this s stands for that we have a zero s state okay let's look at the helium atom the helium atom has electronic configuration one s two that means that it has two electrons the first electron s is r and the second electron s is also r i just want to reiterate this again there's a difference between s and m sub s. s can only take value of half. m s can take value of half and minus half. One half, half. Okay, so back to our lecture. So if s is half, s1 is half and s2 is half, then it means that the resultant s can go from half plus half that's one to half minus half that's zero so this is already an integral step so that means the resultant spin angular momentum can take one and zero value the multiplicity from that when the resultant spin is zero so we have two in zero plus one that's one and when it is one two into one plus one is three so we have a singlet state and the triplet state so we now consider the orbital, resultant orbital, L, the, the, the two electrons are in an S orbital, and for that, our orbital quantum number is 0, so which means L1 is 0 for first electron, and the second electron, it is also 0. So resultant L can take values of 0 plus 0 to 0 minus 0, which is still 0. And a 0 for L resultant indicates and s state so that's an s state so what's j j takes value for s plus l and we have to consider both s values so when s is 1 and l is 0 j is 1 because it's 1 plus 0 all the way to 1 minus 0 so j is 1 and when j is 1 the term symbol 2s plus 1 3 we already calculated that l is 0 it's an s state so we have s and j is 1 for s equals 0 and l equals 0 j can only take the 0 values because that goes 0 plus 0 to 0 minus 0 so we have um, j equals 0 and the term symbol 2s plus 1 l into j 2s plus 1 is 1, L again, our L remains in the S state and J equals 0. So we have two term symbols obtained for the helium atom 3s, the triplet S1 state and the singlet S0 state. However, if we look at these states, we look at this data carefully the triplet estate and the singlet estate so let's consider the triplet estate carefully l 
s is 1, well, that means the ms for the first electron is 1. When the, the resultant spin is 1, and recall that when you have the maximum value, it means that the two electrons are in, pointing in the same direction. So, so what we have is that the two electrons are spinning in the same direction in, this, in the same orbital. And if you recall, it violates the Pauli's principle because it means that the electrons have all four quantum numbers. How did we arrive at these four quantum numbers for the two electrons? Then we look at the electronic configuration. So which means when you're considering many electron atoms, you have to always consider the electronic configuration. The two orbitals are in the ground state orbital with n principal quantum number n being 1. So we have 1, 1 for the two electrons. They are both in the s orbital and l is 0 for the s orbital. ml takes the value of l automatically because of the restriction placed on m sub l. So now, because of our s equals to 1, the resultant spin being 1 now, we have our m sub s being half and half. So this violates the Pauli's principle and the only allowed state for the helium atom in its ground state, emphasis on the word ground state, that is when the two electrons are in the s orbital, is 1s0 corresponding to the total spin being 0 and the total orbital being 0. Well, consequently, the total angular momentum is also 0. Next, 0. Okay, now. This is not only for S2. It's a general situation for all field subshells. It's a general situation for all field subshells, such as S2, P6, D10, and then F14, and so on and so forth. They will always have the term 1S0, singlet S0. So as a result, all field subshells are ignored when determining the term symbol or electronic state. Even it also applies to molecules as well. So because they, there is no contribution the, to the total orbital, to the total spin, or the total angular momentum of the system. In the next video, we would work additional examples on term symbols so that we can understand it very well.